foundation, what back inside the ring or whatever we're going to talk about. J Pan is here today. If you've seen his, you're calling yourself J Pan, right? That is an acronym for my channel. Whatever. True. Or Jason, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Wrestling talk. He mostly does whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I have themes. I, I have like a video log. I just record. I'm going to be branching off on another segment with Industry Talk. That's the name of my wrestling uh, exclusive show, I guess. So I'll just talk about wrestling on that. So I'll have a new video up in the next, next few weeks on that. So see where it goes, I guess. It's pretty good that you're doing that. It's like, yeah. And it just started out to subscribe to the guy. He's, Please subscribe. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. Uh, have you ever told your uh, YouTube nation how you got the name Humanoid Freak? Yeah, I told him before, but I'll tell it again. Like, I'm a big human. That's uh, shit. I fucked that up. <laughs> they know how I am. Uh, I'm a big Bobby Heenan fan, and I got that name from him because he calls his fan humanoids. Why don't you? Why don't you uh, elaborate on your favorite Bobby Heenan moment? Yeah, from his hold on one second. Yeah, he calls his fans humanoids. And basically, when I used to go on the No DQ forums back in the day, if anyone remembers the No DQ forums, they suck now. It's Jeff Meacham and Mike Nagel and a bunch of other guys. Back in 2004 ish, five, it was a good ass forum, and I used to go on there all the time. Just wanted to call myself humanoid, but apparently it didn't go through, so I had to think of something else. And I was a big fan of Freakazoid, so I put two and two together and called myself Humanoid Freak. But that was back in the day when no DQ forms were good. Now it's just full of marks. The idiotic shit that goes on in there. I'm so sorry, but it's true. No DQ forums used to be a place where you can talk to intelligent people about intelligent stuff. Nowadays, it just gives me a massive headache of all the stupid shit they're saying. Uh, WWE Parallel Universe is now the intelligent form that we both yeah, remember. they're like right? brand new. Well, not they're not brand new. They're brand new to me, but it's a pretty good form. Like they're really take their shit seriously because they don't want stupid marks <laughs> talking in there. Yeah, I kind of I did a a YouTube video that's yet to be posted yesterday, and I talked about how I'm kind of on the uh, in the in a shit doghouse platform, so to speak, I guess. Because apparently I'm a, what were you, a trouble causer? A shit disturber? I think they think you're a shit disturber. Because they still haven't gone over the fact that I posted about CM Punk and Chris Benoit from Night of Champions. Apparently, oh, it's a name we should never mention. Chris Benoit is angry. Chris Benoit is here. <laughs> yes. But yet at the same time, there's uh, Facebook groups that still want to pay tribute to Chris Benoit. Like, True, there are some, but when you ever talk about Chris Benoit, you're gonna get those that love him, and then you're gonna get those people that just say like, no, he's a murderer and all that stuff. Like, oh, I don't care, it's like, yeah, he's done some good stuff, but at the end, he's still a murderer, but some people take the Chris Benoit thing way too much. Well, the fact serious. his own son still, uh, well, it's to look at the good in him and, and talks good of him on social media. True, I guess that says something. But in the wrestling world, I guess that's how it is because they're supposed to talk about anything. <clears throat> but wrestling fans, that's like a sort of taboo. Because, like, yeah, you either, like, say good things about Benoit or people just start having a hatred of it because of what he did. Did you say that? So, like, when you weren't there, was like, there was this whole discussion about, I forgot what it was about. It's something to do with Benoit. Was it and then, like, like, the whole uh, forum started, like, being nasty to each other, like, saying, no, why, what the fuck? And then, like, the moderator said, like, okay, from now on, no more Chris Benoit talk. Was it the fact they were posting constantly with, like, a lot of swear words and stuff? Is well, that... people were being disrespectful to each other. It was, like, getting really heated, like, there was big-ass parties. Ha that happened a few months ago when uh, Cena first got injured. Yeah, that, too. Cause... But then, when he said that, like, oh, no more Chris Benoit... This guy, two days later, knowing him because he doesn't check the forums, he doesn't realize what's going on, he mentions a comment, what'd you say? Oh, I just said, hey, uh, I posted a picture of, you know when they do the pay-per-views, they have those graphic photos of the guys yeah. and show the name of the pay-per-view and stuff. I posted the, the forgotten graphic of Benoit and Punk for the ECW title. And apparently that got, the first comment, the one guy's like, I should have known something was up. He's like, oh, we're gonna go through this shit again, <laughs> or something. Yeah, 
Yeah, because that shit happened two days earlier, and it was a big ass shit disturbance. And the moderator pretty much said, flat out, no more Chris Benoit talk. And then two days later, you start doing this shit. Seems to me, from their perspective, you were actually doing this on purpose to cause shit. Do they still have that Benoit post up from a year ago? No, they deleted it because it was like I thought they left it up for example purposes. No, they had to delete that shit. But yeah, yours, like, yeah, as soon as yours popped up, like, people were, like, being nasty to each other again, because he, speaking about Benoit, you're going to get some people that are very livid about that shit. Even it, uh, you, you took me in the PWA panel at Edmonton Expo last year, they call him, uh, the, uh, uh Pegasus uh, Kid. Yeah, they didn't even, I guess that's the r rule of thumb in the wrestling business, they just refer to Benoit by his other known names in the industry, not exactly Yeah, because like, some people don't realize Benoit used to be a Pegasus kid. But doesn't that piss you off? Because I know you're a history buff as much as I am. When they're talking about the Royal Rumble, uh, Benoit was the, the, technically holds the record still of the longest in the, in the match. Yeah, right? but uh, he killed his wife and son, so I can see why they don't want to mention him at all. Even though they do have a, a convicted rapist in Mike Tyson, but he hasn't killed a whole entire family. What's your thoughts on Jimmy Snuka and the whole trial to, about they've declared him mentally incompetent so he will never be convicted? I don't know if that guy is faking it or just really is sick like that because Jimmy Snuka after like what 25 years? 23? This happened in 19 something? 80? 82 or something like 82, that. 82. Like, all these years and he, he finally got, the shit finally came back to get him in the ass like I'm Either he's really sick and in, in senile and doesn't know. He what looks it if you look at photos of him. I know. I'm just saying. Either he's really like that, or he's just playing the biggest con game ever just to get out. Well, it's the wrestling business, so it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wouldn't surprise if Jimmy Snook is actually. Is that maybe the, the reason he never actually won a title in WWE? Yes. Because uh, did you not hear? OVW yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. OSW talks. OSW, about not OVW. And Check you know, out OSW guys. Those guys awesome. are amazing. I love those guys. You they they so call him the coked out fiend killer or something. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbish, Ronnie Garvin. I, I love those guys. I don't know. He, he he's uh, he actually is pretty technically sound in the ring, Ronnie Garvin. Yeah, Ronnie Garvin. I like Ronnie Garvin, but there are some people that don't like him. Like I said, OSW guys don't like him. They actually, and also they don't like hardcore wrestling. I grow them on soon as much as that pisses both of us off. Well, that's their opinion. Like they have their opinions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but still, go check out OSW reviews. They're really amazing. And they still make new reviews every week, don't they? Yeah, they're com they just made two new ones and one coming out in mid June. Stop. And they also do other stuff too, like the room, which I gotta watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. But yeah, Jimmy Snuka. Uh, Your personal opinion? Did he kill her? How, what happened again? I, I always forget the, what they the found her like in a hotel room or something, and there was a big argument before that. From what I remember, who knows? It is the eighties. A lot of shit went down. He used to the beat 80s. his girlfriends though too and stuff. Yeah. Like, it's not like Scott Hall who uh, killed a man in self defense because that guy was killing, gonna kill him if he didn't kill oh, him. Oh, we're talking with Shukul Muhammad Ali passing away. Oh right, I just found that out. But yeah, That's sad as shit. For those of you who don't know, Scott Hall killed a man in self defense a long time ago before he became a wrestler. Yeah, when he was a bouncer in a nightclub, right? Yeah, but he got off as a self defense because this guy was a drunk as fuck or something and just wanted uh, on the verge of killing him. And then <clears throat> Scott Hall had to defend himself, so he killed the guy. And he got off, but yeah, that's Scott Hall. He killed a man, but that was on self-defense. Yeah, okay, speaking of Muhammad Ali, yeah. He died yesterday, June mm -hmm. 3rd. Yeah, uh, I think respiratory failure was the cause of death or something from what I read. 74, still a little, it, it's old, but still kind of young, I guess, to go. But Yeah, for a boxer, yeah. But apparently, you know what's funny though, because he, uh, Got the, he retired like in 1982 from what I was reading online of him and apparently the Parkinson's and all that developed after his retirement and like if you look at early, it was like kind of getting like sort of there was sort of things going on before where Mike uh, Tyson doesn't have Parkinson's and he still talks like he's mentally fucked in the head because he was born with a lisp I, I just think of the hangover and his cameo in that with the tiger in the cage and yeah. shit Mike Tyson he's a uh, he says stupid shit, but he sure can beat the shit out is of you. Is Muhammad Ali in the WWE Hall of Fame? Because he did make an appearance at WrestleMania 1. I think he is. I'm not sure. I gotta look that up. Uh, Fuck! Muhammad Ali in the Hall of Fame. Um, Google that shit. 
Yeah, but anyways, Jimmy Snuka, you, you know, even though he might not ever stand trial, you know, depending on your religious beliefs, he, he'll meet his verdict one day. Like, OJ, OJ Simpson, we all... Oh, he got, it. he got his comeuppance. Yeah, he, he definitely got his comeuppance. He went to jail over a petty argument with his neighbor or something, right? No. Nah. He uh, went to jail for stealing back his own shit back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Which is hilarious. It was like, how the fuck do you go to jail for stealing back your own shit? It's hilarious. Yeah. Kato Kalen doesn't have a beach house to live in anymore. <laughs> but you know what's crazy about OJ? Uh, his defense team, like, I think two thirds of them are, 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 if not all of Holy them. Holy shit, Muhammad Ali is not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's surprising. I was. Okay. Wait. Do there's a thing here that says 12 people that will never be in the Hall of Fame. Oh, I'm not sure. And uh, Kevin Federline's in it. Oh, who could forget his cameos on WWE TV? Ah, uh, fuck, I can't get into it. There's, I got so many pop-ups and shit. Yeah, don't you just hate that? Yeah. Yes, indeed. But I think Muhammad Ali isn't even his real name. It's Cassius Clay. Yeah, Cassius Clay is his real name. He changed it because he didn't want... That was a slave name from the white people that were had his uh, ancestors as slaves. His daughter's boxing too, I think. Yeah, because like the, the the white people, the white family that had his family for slaves, their name was Clay. Ah, uh, or some shit bad, like uh, that. Yeah, I can I can see that. That's what I changed it. Did you ever see the bio movie that Will Smith did on? Yeah, I have the bio movie. I saw that. It's been so long since I've seen it, but it was pretty good. Yeah, Will Smith, man, what's his problem like? Doesn't go to the Oscars because there's no black person was nominated. Here's a thought. What if no black actor was actually good enough this year doing movies? Because usually they are good, but none of them were really good enough this year. Oh, uh... Because they didn't do a good job. Have you ever thought of that shit? <clears throat> Don't oh, no, like he's t uh, boycotting it. This, he boycotted this year because there was no black actors nominated. What's Will Smith done of relevance recently? I, I think uh, he's in... Uh, Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah, he's coming out in that, but other than that, he, I haven't really seen I it. hope he's in a cameo in Independence Day 2. Isn't he in that? No, his son is. Not his real son, the actor playing his son. I hate this. First one. I'm, I'm not sure, sure if it's the actual kid that's growing up now, but it's his son that's playing his son. Did you see that movie him and his boy did a couple, After Earth or something? That Wait, After Earth or... Uh, the one where the, him and his boy had the starring roles is Earth something. After Earth. Yeah. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong. Oh, that's an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Yeah. Which I refuse to watch because it's M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, his movies are not the same anymore, are they? Apparently his newest movie, whatever the fuck it's called, The Visit, apparently it's really good. I still say The Sixth Sense is the best movie he ever did. Sixth Sense and sort of Signs was such Signs, Signs is so fucked up. <laughs> Signs was kind of good up until the end. Uh, the I liked it up until the end. Unbreakable was horrible. The village was stupid. What what was it that? Oh, the I think he did the Wicker Man with Nicolas Cage. No, he didn't do the Wicker Man. Oh, did you ever see that movie yet? No, I still haven't. Nicolas Cage, uh, being old Nicolas Cage, uh, I need to see. Did that. Nostalgia Critic have a Nicolas Cage month a few years back or something? Yes, he did. He did Face Off. It was hilarious. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, Nicolas, I, uh, who hasn't seen? Um, oh God. The, the movie where Sean Penn, uh, the, the, where, the, I just forget the, anyways. Doing what? No, Nicolas Cage in his early acting credits, because he's Francis Ford Coppola's, uh, Nephew. Was actually using his, uh, real given name before he, I don't know, is Nicolas Cage a... Nicolas Coppola? A moniker? Nicholas Coppola. Yeah, he's the Nicholas Coppola in some of his early acting credits, I noticed. He was in Fast Time at Ridgemont. Yeah, yeah, that... You took the word. I just couldn't think of the title of that. In like a two second cameo. Yeah, they had his name listed in that. Yeah, two second cameo. It's like you can barely see him. And then Sean Penn looks completely. Maybe it's because he looks. I, like if you look at Sean Penn in. Sean Penn looks like he always does every year. He never look. He always looks like an old man, even when he was a young kid. In Fast Times. He looks, looks somewhat like, young in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, but. Sort of. He still looks like he's a 50 year old man playing a uh, high school kid. Or maybe it's just me, because Sean Penn always looks like an old man, no matter what. Um, Judge Reinhold, the, he kind of looks like shit now from... Uh, from what does he look like? Because he... Well, he is older. Like, we all get older. Last time I saw him was in uh, the Santa Claus movie. It was Tim Allen. 
That's how long ago I saw them. Fast talk, uh, the, the, the dude that played the friend, uh, Spicoli, I think, or? That's Sean Penn. Not Spicoli, no, no. The other guy, uh, uh the, the, the Joey Triviani looking dude? Yeah. Yeah, he looks like shit, too. <laughs> I don't even know his name. I just can't think of it, but yeah, Fast Times at Ridgemont High is a classic. Yes, it is. Uh, so what do you think of Zami Zane and Kevin Owens having their feud? I talked about that in my... Yeah, you talked about it in your video, but you haven't talked about it either. Uh, shit. That's what happens when you live downtown. Yeah. Drive nice. racing, left and right, all the time. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I guess uh, it's cool. Like I, like I, I said to you, uh, I like how the fact that they started on the Indies and, you know, started on the Montreal Independence Circuit, came up together and, you know, had a rivalry in Ring of Honor, even though it was under the El Generico moniker, it's still the same thing. And then now they're continuing. Same wrestler, just a different name. Now they're, as Jim Cornette calls him, the ginger uh, Muslim or something. As <laughs> racist Muslim. as that sounds. And, uh... You know, you know Sammy Zayn looks like a skinny Seth Rogen. Yeah. And I can't stop looking at him like that now, because, like, I saw an interview with Sammy Zayn, and they, they said flat out, I was like, has anyone ever told you you look, like a, you look like a skinny Seth Rogen? I will forever see a skinny Seth Rogen whenever Sammy comes out now. Seth Rogen's fat? <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Seth Rogen's always fat. Well, less fat now, but he's still... Was it him face. that was in Green Hornet? Yes. Yeah, Such a shit movie. Uh, so bad. Green La Green Lantern. Was Green Lantern. I only saw the first twenty minutes, and I just turned off that shit. I go like, "What the fuck is this shit?" So, what do you think the chances are Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens might one day be feuding over the title? Because Kevin Owens is technically penciled in to win Money in the Bank, top pick in a few weeks. Well, they sort of did fight over a title, like NXT title. No, but we're, we're talking main roster awesome titles. Yeah. But like I, I said. Um. I can see Kevin Owens winning it and Sami Zayn chasing it but never winning the actual title. Because you don't have to, you can still have technically uh, IC level type guys challenging for the main title. It doesn't always have to be main event guys, right? It's right. Just filler. Fillers. By the way, what do you think of John Cena being put on the SmackDown brand when the draft comes uh, back? Is that all skepticism? Like, that's no, what don't I believe mean, it until you see I know, but I'm surprised they're putting him on SmackDown. Does it want to make SmackDown a better Yeah, but is he the main moneymaker Raw, like they always said? I guess they want to put Roman on that show. I guess. The Samoa John Cena is uh, the wrestling community calls him. <clears throat> yeah, the Samoan Superman, Samoan John Cena. Who is probably going to main event WrestleMania the next five, five years. Six, seven years. Even though the crowd just boos him left and right, and Vince McMahon still doesn't get it. Because every time he comes out, he gets booed no matter what he Would does. Would you say, though, uh, like, talking about uh, uh, memorable uh, moments from the wrestling industry, that the Hogan, NWO, Bash at the Beach thing is probably the most remembered thing in terms of the 90s, turning heel? Or do you have well, some... that's when he officially turned heel. Like, a couple months before Bash at the Beach, he was wearing all black and wearing a beard because, like, he was like, didn't know what the hell he was doing. I watched one match, but no, hold oh, on. It's like, yeah. It's like before all that shit, he was sort of like a precursor, like, where he was wearing all black because he was like, oh, he did the all black thing before NWO? Yeah, I, that's what I'm talking about. Like, oh, like a couple of months before that shit, he was doing an angle where he just stopped caring for some reason. And there was lying to see to, uh, to the NWO, like, but no one saw it coming anyway because, like, if you look back a couple of months before, he was wearing the black and shit, and then came back to the yellow. And then the NWO thing started. I think Sting was the original guy they wanted in that role, right, or something? Well, Sting was in the six-man thing already. I forgot who it was supposed to be, because it was... Or it was Lex Luger? No, Lex Luger, Sting... Randy Savage. And Randy Savage were taking on the NWO, the Outsiders, was a mystery partner. Forgot who that was supposed to be, but it was supposed to be someone, but they never showed up to the building. I gotta look that up again, but then they got Hulk Hogan to replace it at the last minute. I think it was the last minute, but the, <clears throat> there was someone else to do it, but never showed up at the building. I I always thought it was Sting. Who knows? But um, it's just if they could have done that NWO, yeah, I was saying it's the NWO Hogan turning, which saved the most memorable moment of the '90s. There's other stuff that you could think From of. Like WCW, just in general, the wrestling industry. As a whole. Oh, well, there's the 
NWO forming. Stone Cold stunning Vince McMahon for the first time ever because you never saw that before. And Because you seriously thought that guy was fired and it showed up on a week later. And that's it looked like he was having the That's shooter. when you realized wrestling was fake. Because like you, fu you kick your boss's ass in real life, you're fired right away. Because that's what happened to me. He's like, I saw that shit happen. I go, oh fuck, he's gone. And he's not coming back. He's done. The next week he shows up on TV. I go like, what the fuck? Okay, this shit's fake. But entertaining. No, but I guess what I was trying to say with Hogan turning heel, I I know it's been beat to death, Cena turning heel, but I would love just to see something where Cena, in an ideal scenario, like a, like a guy like Sami Zayn, who everyone just loves, he just comes out and, you know, maybe turns on Zayn and you get that kind of repeat of the Hogan back. You just say that Sami Zayn comes out and turns no, on No, Cena Sammy. turns on Sami Zayn. Oh, yeah. And, you know, just a repeat of uh, the whole... Something that would ignite new life into the John Cena character, you know? Yeah, of course. I know the reason they're not doing it because, like, his kids' merchandise is going to go down the drain, but... But Cena can do heel, though, man. If you've seen his... Yes, own... he can do heel. He's an amazing heel. When he was doing the rap gimmick, he was amazing. But technically, we as a society in the age that we live in with social media and technology, shouldn't we be intelligent enough to know that a guy can be a heel as a character on TV and still go out and do the charity stuff. There not there a difference? Like, there was, uh, apparently Vince McMahon still believes in kayfabe. Well, fuck. Even though it's the reality era, still. Triple H, when he's out doing public events, he doesn't come in and... I am the game! Paul Levesque, vice president of uh, talent relations, you know, there, there's a difference. It, it, it's like... Uh, Give me an actor that plays all villains in movies. I just can't think of any right now. Sean Hurt. Like, and, uh, James Woods. Or Anthony Hopkins, you know. It, it, he plays kind of a lector. Fuck. I thought that's annoying. It's, Always was the drag racing here in downtown. Damn. No, but ha I guess Anthony Hopkins would be a perfect example. Played Hannibal Lecter in the Silence of the Lamb movies. It's not like when he goes into a restaurant, that they get scared that he's gonna eat you, you know? Tep well, when Silence of the Lambs first came out, people were scared of him legitimately really? when, they, when he was walking down the street. Because they actually saw him as Hannibal Lecter and people ran the other way. They're like, But this is the fucking dude. movie you're crying out. Yes, but he was so good at portraying Hannibal Lecter. Because they thought it was actually real. It's like, you see Hannibal Lecter walking down the street, you run the fuck away. No, but I'm just saying with John Cena, I think he can still play a heel on WWE programming and still do the charity stuff, but maybe the, the well, here's the cash kid thing, but so but he yeah. he'll sell merchandise too. I mean, if I'm not correct, the NWO made a lot of true, but Vince McMahon is just a hypocrite with this shit. Oh, speaking of Vince, are you aware that he's aware of different talent outside of the WWE bubble? Have you read that the the news about that circulating the idea? Like which ones? He wants Adam Cole. I mean, you know Adam Cole. Yeah. He's a big fan him. of him. He wants him in NXT. I'm just surprised Vince is aware of him. What? Vince McMahon knows who Adam Cole is? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Coming from a guy who didn't know who the Midnight Express was. <laughs> no, the Rock and Roll Express. Never which one's Ricky? Which one's Roberts? Yeah, considering they were the biggest tag team of the 80s and he doesn't know who they are. But Adam Cole, if you've seen his stuff, he does have that it factor, man. He's, yes, he's he excellent. Adam Cole is amazing. And I just... Do, do you think, though, if he joined the WWE that they would change his name because uh, of... Oh, yeah, they would call him something else. No, but uh, Johnny Gargano was in WWE and they haven't changed his name. So if he was on NXT, though... So yeah. you, imagine if he shows up... Well, nowadays they're actually doing the real... No, Lost Triple H on NXT. Carl Anderson kept his name. So yeah, they're going with the whole keeping your name thing now, which is different. And I guess there's what was the last time? Attitude there was Chris Benoit, Perry Saturday, yeah. and guys. But they showed Chris Jericho, and then after that, people they change their names all the time. I still don't understand why Curtis Axel just can't be uh, uh, Joe Henny. You know, maybe maybe Who that would knows, bring But that guy's legitimately is just bona fide jobber now. Aren't they? Well, Job Squad 2016, right? Yeah, Job Squad 2.0 by this Adam Rose who's gone. Uh, Adam Rose has got some issues to work yeah. out, so I'll invest you him on that. But uh, by the way, is Funaki officially an employee of the WWE now? 
Because I see him in like the. He's doing the announcement. The, the uh, Japanese announce team. <laughs> Did you not find that funny? Yes, the guy speaking Japanese, or whoever his name is, and they go like, Urubara, whatever he's saying. Funaki, number one announcer. Yeah, you also got those uh, Russian guys. Yeah, I like how they're doing the different commentating teams, but it was funny to see Funaki back just to be there. It's like, yeah, I don't know if he, that, Funaki actually knows Japanese. Uh, the, 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 the Caribbean guys, or like that, remember that Hugo guy? The Hugo Spanish? Spanish? He's not there anymore. I think yeah, he, he got, got canned a long time ago. Uh, all the long time. Brooklyn Brawler got fired. Yeah, that was surprising. Uh, that was surprising to see the brawler got released. Spirit series and finally be different. You heard the life. story why? I I did, but I forgot what the hell Apparently happened. Apparently, he called into Taz's podcast and said some things he should have from what I read. But really? Didn't get the exact details, but it's it sucks to see a guy who uh, was on the early WrestleMania season with the Red Rooster. <laughs> When was he? What? Which WrestleMania was he taking out? He was either on number five, or he was in Bobby Heenan's corner, or something, or, or maybe it's after. I just know Bobby Heenan managed him for a bit. When yeah. He feuded with the Red Rooster. I, I'm just just remember he was like you know the first the only WrestleMania he was in in seventeen, the gimmick Battle Royal. By the way, uh, as Kim, Kim the, as Kim Kim Chi. Oh, okay. Uh, no, but being that we're talking, like, uh, you, you know all the stuff from OV, the old school wrestling that I know, like, uh, do you remember the story how they, the, I just learned this watching the, uh, WrestleMania 6 review, that apparently the Akeem gimmick was a, a shot at Dusty Rhodes before he came. A dancing he, white man, but he's, apparently, he's yeah. black. And the fact that he was, a supposed to be a South African white man, and he talked perfect English in his promos. <laughs> it was like the most racist gimmick ever. Like the white guy dancing like he's African. And you know, the funny thing is, we always thought the big boss man was a cop, but he, he was, was just that. a fucking prison guard. No, he was never a cop. He was actually a prison guard. No, the gimmick though. No, he's... no they said he was a prison guard. No, but he's a, he, he, OVW, they just, oh, why do you call him OVW? OSW, because OVW, we always remember OVW. OSW was joking about that. They're like, he's trying to, demonstrate law and order, but he's just a prison guard or something like that. Yeah. I'm just saying what they joked about. That's why he got into feud was the Mountie. You know why the Mountie was banned from Canada for pers uh, for impersonating a police officer? The Mountie well, no, he wasn't banned. He was just banned from being the Mountie. He could be Jacques Rougeau uh, in Canada, but he could not be the Mountie. But you know what's hilarious? When he was doing the Mountie thing, his brother Raymond was doing the announcing thing at the same time. Yeah. So I bet they kept kayfabe during that era for that shit. Most likely, it was the 80s after all. Considering they were like the the, the fabulous Rougeaus, like that was Rougeaus, and then they brought it. They recalled them the Quebecers and brought in Pierre Ouellet, who was Jacques Rougeau, because Raymond was pretty much retired at that time. Are you a fan of the Oriental Express? Which one, Sato and Tanaka or Sato and Kato? The, the one that took on the Rockers at WrestleMania 6. They were, bo they were both different versions took them on. There was two Rainiers where they took them on, I think. Apparently, OSW is talking about, uh, remember when um, Powers of Pain split up and uh, one went to Slick, one went to, uh, to Bobby Heenan? And yeah. The story was Mr. Fuji needed the money <laughs> so he could bring in the Oriental Express. And they had the most God-given racist Japanese music ever. I forgot what it was, but... It I, sounds like banging chopsticks together. <laughs> Isn't that... <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, they always have racist themes for Japanese. Didn't one of the Oriental Express have, like, a mask at one time? I remember. Yeah, that was Pat Tanaka when he was called Tanaka. Because he was not Japanese. He, he was, was from the, the AWA, guy. right, I think? Or... Yeah. And he was the one who played Max Moon. I thought Conan the... did. It was supposed to be Conan, he wore the suit, but then he said, fuck this shit, I'm not doing it, I'm way better than this shit. You know what I see Max Moon? And then Patanaka got... I think I like that Nintendo character, Mighty Max or something nice. Ooh, Mighty Max, or, there was a Nintendo character. Uh, In WWE? No, 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 In Nintendo games, there was a character that kind of had... Anyways, Max Moon looked like something out of an early 80s Nintendo game, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Oh, okay, yeah. Max Moon. <laughs> Jeez. 
Challenge you for the Intercontinental title on Raw number one <laughs> against oh, Shawn Michaels. God. The early days of Raw were horrible. And T.L. Hopper really was a legend in, in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Who would have thought that, right? The Dirty yes. White Boy. Oh yeah, the Dirty White Boy was a massive legend. And he was, he was a Dirty White Boy? Yeah. T.L. Hopper was Dirty White yeah. Boy? Yeah. Holy shit! Fucking Vince! <laughs> Another one where he got his hands on, like, fuck, I never realized Teal Hopper was Dirty White Boy. And Barry Windham was some type of stalker, or the, wind the widow man. Uh, Blackjack Windham, and he was also the stalker. Taking on Fatu, you can make a difference. Or er, Fatu, you can make a difference. Surprise, that can make a difference. It's like, oh, I like to save the children of the hood. But wasn't that a thing in the 90s, those drug PSAs yeah. and all that shit, so... Maybe getting on board with that, I guess. Yeah. And then he went. He was the Sultan after that, I think. The Sultan, and then came back as Rikishi Fatu, and then just Rikishi. He was a lot skinnier at WrestleMania Nine when he took on the Stein Brothers. <laughs> he wasn't that big, yeah. <clears throat> you know, you know, OSW says it. The early WrestleManias really were a one-match show. If you look. That's at it. yeah, of course, because anybody can be on it. Like there were like basically six-minute matches. And do you find it funny that Hacksaw Jim Duggan at WrestleMania 6, I think he was taking on Dino Bravo or Earthquake, still trying to act like the biggest fucking baby face, comes up with the American flag, but he gets booed out of the building because it's in Canada. I just find little shit like that absolutely Yeah, because really. Hacksaw is just a fucking Patriot guy. He but he was a part of Team Canada years later in WCW. You're yeah, not surprised he did that because it actually went on Team Canada and denounced his American citizenship. And Greg Valentine... Uh, Looking like the Honky Tonk Man, lip syncing to some generic song here at WrestleMania 6. Oh yeah, Greg Valentine and Honky Tonk Man, the Dream Team. That was the actually... second version of the Dream Team. Huh? Oh, the, oh yeah. The okay. first version of the Green, the first version of the Green, the Dream. Green Dream Team was Greg Valentine and Bruce's Beefcake. Oh, I love how they call uh, Dusty Road uh, Sapphire Black Sugar. <laughs> what? Black Sugar. Oh, right. <laughs> well, no one is W or WWE? OSW. That's oh, yeah. their name for her. Black Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love those guys. Take a boo. <laughs> was she actually a trained wrestler? No. Because why the fuck did she get a match at WrestleMania 6? They explained it on her because she was a big fan of Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> and just because she was a big ass fan of Dusty Rhodes, they gave her a job. That's like. Judy Bagwell becoming one half of the WCW Tag Champs, kinda. You know, Judy Bagwell on a pole match, which was actually on a forklift. But I'm actually surprised the OSW, they haven't critiqued all the pay-per-views of the Attitude Era yet. I don't think they're gonna do them all because they go like this. They did the Hulkamania Era. Yeah, that was pretty good. I would've thought they would've... Cause I didn't like the first Royal Rumble, Mr. Perfect. No, wait. Okay, the one where Hulk Hogan won the Royal Rumble. That was supposed to be Mr. Perfect winning it, but... Yeah, that pissed me off. Yeah, and then it pissed me off when they said OSW was explaining that Hulk Hogan vetoed that shit. Mr. Perfect! That guy totally could have been world champion, I think. Yes, right. he could have been champion. He was AWA champ, I know it doesn't count, but... Yeah, I know, but, like, again, Vince doesn't care if you're from a different company. Look at Taz, look what he did to him. Yeah. Or like, even... Taz was such a monster. And then he was just some small dude on the WWF. Or Diamond Dallas Page. Look at how they fucked him over when he yeah. came. I just, still, I'm st I was waiting for the day where they had People's Champion versus People's Champion. The Rock versus DDP. I would have loved to have seen that. That would have been amazing. Wouldn't you even love to see the People Champ DDP against The Undertaker? That would have been a... Why not? Like, he did the stalker shit with Taker, right? Diamond yeah, but that was killed him so bad the first time. I don't think they ever had a one-off match, like an official one-on-one no, match. No, because, uh, what's his, what's her face? Undertaker's wife, Sarah, pinned him in a match one time. That's like when Sable pinned Mark Merrill when Steve Austin calls up Vince. I'm not wrestling this guy on the house show, <laughs> you know, considering he killed the credibility of my character, because Austin's smart that way. Yes, he is. That's how he's so smart that he still hasn't <clears throat> never wrestled Hulk Hogan because he knows what's going to happen if he wrestles Hulk Hogan. One match I would love to see, uh, it still could happen because uh, Sean can still go. Rock is the occasional match. is uh, a one-on-one -on -one match between those two guys, which I'm surprised never did happen. But yeah, I'm going to be like, I'd like to see that. Shawn Michaels can still go. He's like, 
He says he retired, but like a, no. Yeah. But apparently, Rock. Uh, you, did, did you ever hear the story why Rock is hot at Sean? Because uh, something about like Sean Michaels didn't believe Rock would be a big star or something. Oh no, he was rude to one of his relatives. Oh right. Back in the day when he was uh, the cocky ass Sean that everyone what hated. A, when Sean Michaels was a, such a shit. When he was full of drugs and shit. And it was Pat Patterson that had the man crush on Sean, right? Yes. Well, obviously, my Pat's God, him. Pat Patterson. Him and his ways. Him but and his ways. Are you surprised he did not induct Ray Stevens into the Hall of Fame when the Mania was in San Francisco? I don't know much about Ray Stevens, but yeah, apparently he's I. a freaking legend in San Francisco. In well, the, it's whoever Pat Vince Patterson want, were a team. Well, it's whoever Vince wants in the Hall of Fame. If he can make like a buck out of your name, then he'll do it. I don't think you can make a buck out of Ray Stevens' name. So it's not an actual... No disrespect to Ray Stevens. I'm just saying. I so then the whole Hall of Fame thing that WWE does each year is a joke. It's yes. not actually pay... Re- ho- 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 is like I said that plenty of times, Hall of, the WWE's Hall of Fame is not a legit thing. It's always been a joke. What are the chances we can... But I'll still watch it every year for some reason. I would love to see Jim Cornette going just for the speech. <laughs> oh, God. You, I don't think they'll allow it to talk. Oh, are you aware of the whole t- Twitter thing? The you have Twitter, right? Yeah. The blue check mark. Yeah. Fucking the, the, joke. The, the verified. Yeah. Apparently, uh, Cornette uh, was using because uh, he talks about this on his podcast. Apparently, he never got verified because he apparently they, they it costs people money to get that stupid little blue check mark. And he's like, I'm not paying four hundred dollars to get. Wait. What? You have to pay to get a check mark? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a shady pyramid scheme thing. That's, well, fuck that shit. Like, yeah, no. But I'm he finally even... did get it because he, enough public outcry, but a lot of these fucking celebrities that have the blue check mark, it's either because they're so big or. I don't know what the big deal is about the check mark. Of course, they show that you're verified, but that doesn't mean shit. But you know what's funny? If, say, your name was Steve Smith. Most common generic name in the world. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm just saying this as an example. If somebody has the same name as you, they can literally kind of steal your identity that way by taking that name before you sign up. So yeah, you'd have to put like the real Steve Smith. I'm just, I'm just saying that all. It's funny because even Facebook has the blue check mark. All that shit. Facebook has a blue check mark. Yeah, they do too on the public page. Crap. I did not know that. But uh, I know YouTube has that stuff. But I don't really care. No, but don't you I find don't, it? I don't really care about the YouTube channel. No, but that's probably something that none of us could give a shit less about. It just proves every little thing that somebody can make money at in this life, even for yeah. something like that. But True. I could totally see you if you were, uh, uh, like, who knows? Humanoid freak is the the popularity is growing every day, right? A little bit, but not too much. But, no, but say you get to the, you become one of those. Uh, One billion big, big YouTube guys. Even if you had that stacks of cash, I could totally see you even not paying for a blue check mark. I, if, no, if I'm, a che- I'm a cheap motherfucker. <laughs> I, mean, I am not paying for four hundred dollars just to get a goddamn check mark. No, fuck that shit. <clears throat> I don't know if like if YouTube does that as well, but like if no man, no. But you even like at your subscriber uh, base, you still get the trolls that troll you. On YouTube, right? Yeah, you always do. You always get those. Do you, do you just take it with a grain of salt, or do you, have you ever had moments where you just want to lose someone of them, or do you just have to always remind yourself it's fucking social media and not worth it? Well, that and I also like to troll them back and just see how they get pissed off of what I said. But the fact that it's so fun, like me, me with the the, the wrestling parallel. You gotta admit, the fact that they've restricted my access to it, you gotta find that funny. I know you probably chuckle about it. Yeah. Well, they've restricted everybody's access now because I tried to post something, and so like you have to wait until it gets approved. Oh, maybe I don't know. I thought I got restricted. No, but it's everybody. But I think yours got more restricted because like I think they. What would I come across as a pandering fanboy if I messaged one of the moderators? Yeah. Well, are you seriously gonna? No, no. The if I did, I'm just saying hypothetically. It's like, hey, uh, what are you doing this week? <laughs> I bet that would get me removed from the group for sure, yeah. right? True. Can they remove me from the group? Have they done that to people before? I think they've done that to people. Because I played right from hell. I bet that I was in first class where Michael Hayes got his fucking ponytail cut off. I think that was just a jet airliner. Like, they were a private plane. By the way, uh, you found that 
The story absolutely hilarious, and I told you I thought Ronnie Garvin and Jimmy Garvin were brothers. They're like, what the fuck are you? No, because like, I thought that too when I first heard about them back in the day. But yeah, then I figured out. I was like, damn, we figured out. That Jimmy Garvin technically was never part of the Freebirds. He was just part of the fucking. I think WCW. They had it. No, he was part of the Freebirds. They won tag team titles. He was actually in I, the Freebirds. Yes, Michael, no, Buddy Rogers, Michael Hayes, Buddy Roberts, uh, Michael Hayes, Terry Gordy. There was three of them, or was, was uh, Garvin the fourth? Jimmy three? Garvin. Because it was Terry Gordy. I think it was Terry. Terry Gordy, Gordy yeah, Terry Hayes, Gordy, Buddy Michael Rob, Hayes, Buddy Rob. Roberts, and then Jimmy Garvin came in later. Yeah, I think he was. In and the, then he was tag team champions with Michael Hayes from the rest of the era. I just love the fact that when I first saw Michael Hayes' Doc Hendricks, I, I did not know who the fuck that guy was. Neither did I, man. This was when I first started. I, I thought he was, was a doctor. <laughs> I, know, I thought he was some gay dude, with the way he talked. Some gay dude, yeah, talk. Did you not seriously think Doc Hendricks was a gay dude? Thinking about it now, I do, yeah. It was like, when I first watched that, I was like, hey, he goes like, hi, I'm Doc Hendricks. Uh, the way he was dancing, the way he was walking around, I go, okay, this guy's gay. And then I figured out, oh. Then I found out he's Michael Hayes, and then I started studying the business. I was like, oh shit, Michael Hayes! He's a legend. He's a legend. And then I started watching the Freebirds. And you seen the match where he's referee in the cage? Uh, I'm like, back, like I said, Doc Hendricks. Like, I seriously thought it was, he was this old, creepy gay dude. Old, oh, creepy. The picks up 16 year old girl. <laughs> like, yeah, when I was like, the Hardy Boys, I'm like, oh, this is weird. But you gotta he's remember, that's the attitude there. That's the era of realism, I guess. But, uh, you know, um,. The Hardy Boys, uh, when they won the tag titles for the first time, they probably wouldn't have won it if they were wearing the stupid uh, generic neon attire, the, the, their jogger. Oh, when they were like suspenders, Hardys? The ones just wearing suspenders? The, 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 the neon. Yeah, the suspenders. Yeah, when they took on kind tag. They wouldn't, they, they wouldn't have been tag team champions because they didn't look like wrestlers. They looked like your brothers trying to get it on TV. By the way, did you know Edge and Christian? are really the only team that both guys have won world oh, the Edge and Christian Hardy Boys Dudley Boys thing? Yeah, Edge and Christian are the you don't count the ECW title, it's not No, true. talking about Edge and Christian. No, fuck the ECW title. The world oh. title or the WWE title? Wait, Edge Jeff Christian. Hardy has been champion. Matt has never champion. won the world title. Matt never. Edge and Christian are well, the Well, yeah, you say ECW champion, but that doesn't No, but in for... terms of actual world titles, it's the world in the WWE that only counts. Oh, uh, Bubba Ray Dudley, TNA world champion. But do we count that, though? We could count that, but... No, but in WWE, uh... In I... WWE, no, you don't count it, but... Edge and Christian are the only ones. He is a former world champion. Yeah, no, but in the WWE bubble of the, the ones that actually count, Edge and Christian are the only ones that have both done it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, well, you could say DX, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, but they're not like. Would you count them as an actual team? Like, or is it what? Any... Before they became Triple H and. Sh well, when they first started out, they were actually a team. They never won the tag team titles when they were starting out. That was later on when they were big time names. Yeah, but. I, and and they were 40 years old and they didn't need to be like degenerates anymore. No, but actual teams have teamed together for a lengthy period of time. I guess you could say Edge and Christian were the only guys that did it, I guess, but it uh, probably have to be something you have to think about, right? Strike Force, no. Demolition, no. Powers of Pain, no. Heart Foundation, only Bret Hart. Did you really just say Powers of Pain? Come on. I was just naming all the I know, I know, yeah. I know. Uh, the Bolsheviks, no. Um, yeah, Edge and Christian are the only two teams. Triple H and Shawn Michaels, B Generation X. Uh, tag teams, right? Not stables. Yeah, like actual teams, I guess. A team together. Actual teams. Yeah. The, in WWE. Well, I guess in WWE, yeah. okay. but that, that could be subjective, uh, subjective, I guess. John Morrison and The Miz? No, just The Miz. Uh, Techno Team 2000. No. Have you heard of this? There's this new team in NXT. They're this Australian team. They're pretty big. TMNT2 or something? Or... What? TMNT2? Oh, I can't see the name, but they're, they're pretty... They're, they're, they're a big deal. And apparently, uh, I think uh, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa beat them. And, and Corey Graves was just raving about them. Apparently, they're uh, a pretty big deal on the... Uh, I'm going to look these guys up. I don't... T D M K T M N something. I, I'm not. Either from CCW. That name rings a bell. I don't. I just. I'm getting. I'm. I'm probably screwing the name up. But there's some other 
this Andre something guy, he's going to be debuting at TakeOver. Another big name, Andre Sika. Or, I'm not going to say it, but there, there's a big name they signed that's a pretty big deal. He's going to be debuting at the TakeOver event. So. Okay. Don't know who that is, but okay. Well, when they're doing vignettes for the guy, he must be known, right? Whatever happened to No Way Jose? Still there. Is he actually on SmackDown or what? No. Where do you see the brand extension going? No, but they oh. did vignettes of him coming to the main roster. Mm -hmm. Did he actually show up or no? He just debuted on NXT. He's still new. I thought they were they no, on it, SmackDown. It'll be, it'll be a while yet Wait, for him. So why did he say he was going to debut on SmackDown? I don't know where you're seeing this unless you watch I haven't seen SmackDown this week yet. so That was quite a while back. Okay, I guess I must have missed this. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of cool, though. Joe and Balor in a cage. Balor's never been in a steel cage from what uh, they were talking about, so... Who talked about it? From, uh... What he, he's talking about in interviews, he, he said he's never oh, actually... Right. I'm trying to remember. No, he's never been in a cage. So he'll kind of be making history. Yeah. And, and it's kind of cool, though. First time ever in NXT uh, to do in a cage match. So it's like they're... All right, NXT, first ever cage match. Because they, they've done the ladder matches, so... That'd be pretty interesting. Well, they've done some WWE. WWE has never had a women's Iron Man match, so NXT is. They had one in NXT. No, but in the the, the main, main roster, roster, they've never done that. No, yeah. And there, do you, do you see the the women? Did you hear the rumors that they were going to do an all women's Money in the Bank match? I would love to see that, but can can the women actually like beat the shit out of each other for that? Or uh, the women getting their own like show weekly on the network? I didn't know they had the depth of a roster. Well, I guess they could, could sign up talent, so... Well, they're doing their cruiserweight stuff, so... That would yeah. be cool. They're bring, I don't know if they're bringing back the cruiserweight title. Like, what does the winner get from that cruiserweight series? Like, a contract to be on Raw or SmackDown, or what? I'll just have to see, I guess. Because it'd be amazing if they brought back the cruiserweight title. Let Horswoggle not be the last ever champion. Yeah, but also, too, guys get pigeonholed in that cruiserweight. Yeah, true, but still, they do have decent matches. Gregory Helms uh, had some uh, pretty remarkable reign there yeah. for a while. There was like this one match in No Way Out where Rey Mysterio and Chavo Guerrero had like a 25-minute match with a cruiserweight title. I was surprised. Usually they go 6 to 10 minutes. Or they can yeah. run back to like heavyweight title. True, but here's the thing though, like when I was watching that back when I used to go to the theater to watch this stuff, yeah, some asshole was going like, well, this match fucking end already. I guess they weren't fans of cruiserweights. When this match was a fucking classic. If they do bring the cruiserweight uh, division back, it would get a lot of guys that normally wouldn't get signed, give them a, to get a look at it, them to come up, come under the, to come to the WWE basically. And plus the guys that they already have, Tyson Kidd can go for it, like cruiserweight title. Once he comes uh, back, Sami Zayn. Who else are they got? Uh, uh, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, uh, Enzo Amore, the Vada villains. Cruiserweights don't even look like cruiserweights anymore. By the way, Cody uh, leaving WWE. That overall good thing, right? Yeah. He would have been stuck in that Stardust gimmick do, forever. Do you see if maybe three years? Because guys come and go all the time. You never know, he could come back eventually. Do you think maybe he could come back? And like I said, never say never. And I used to say, no, this guy's never coming back, but I stopped saying that as soon as things showed up at the WWE ring. They're like, officially anything can happen now. So, Especially when Ultimate Warrior came back after all that beef. And Bruno San Martino. Those are the major three. Bruno actually uh, is kind of the most surprising considering. Yeah, like I said, how much surprising. he. Triple H was the one that made that happen. Yeah. It, it, it's almost like WWE uh, kind of needs Triple H more than he needs that, them because he's done so much, you know, as much as we bashed him in, in like 10 years ago, he's done so much good for the overall yeah, product. He, he's doing the organization. Product, like backstage, he's amazing. He brought us, he's working on NXT and shit and making it amazing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that help help out with that, but that's got to take a lot of his top, own personal time as well. Yeah. Like, Considering what NXT used to be, NXT used to be a fucking joke. Oh, yeah, the campiness of that show. Yeah. Right? Like the one season where they had all women. I'm not saying the women, no offense to the women, but the women they had on there. It, what, what the fuck? Are you a fan of Dana Brooke? Have you seen much of her? She not can't... seen much of Dana Brooke. Fitness girl, but she's, she's pretty. She's a fitness model. Came from the uh, bodybuilding shit. Okay. 
Sucks that Emma's injured though, eh? You heard about that? No, I didn't she, hear about that. She like has got a stinger in her neck. She'll be out pretty well a good portion of this year, so got to feel it for her on that instance. Yeah, you got to feel it for anybody that's injured. Except uh, for John Cena when he was injured. <laughs> I, I love that. But now he's coming back. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Yeah, he always comes. I think he came back four months earlier. Four months earlier, like he always does. Still like, not 100%. I think he's like 80. Of course he's not 100%, but that guy is a fucking machine. You think he's going to be able to keep up with the style that AJ wrestles at Money in the Bank? Or is AJ uh, AJ style down? is not that fast anymore because like, he's working the WWE style. I and mean, he's gotten older too, right? So. Yeah. No, he can still. I don't know if he can. Well, can he still go? Does he's, it do the he's, style? I think he's, he's in his 40s. No, he's like 39. 30s, yeah. What are the chances Christopher Daniels or Kazarian could get signed to a WWE contract? I don't think so, because they don't look... They don't have the look. Christopher Daniels, Daniels never ages. ages. <laughs> what? Christopher Daniels is like... I love how they say he never ages. He always looks the same. Like, he, yeah, he looks he 70 and still look like uh, he's 70, basically. I don't know, but... Yeah. Even... Like, wrestling matches for jacked or metal back in the day, I guess that still counts technically working for the WWE. Because I'm actually surprised. Uh, yeah. They actually mentioned uh, that about AJ's uh, uh, wrestling early for the WWE. I think. Well, now that he's. Cole alluded to it on commentary. Well, now that he's signed with them, they're, yeah, they gotta mention something sometimes. Like, before they would have mentioned it, but now they do. Like, uh. Like TNA, like what we forget, like what oh they, TNA, the place where everybody goes, to, where wrestling goes to die. I just hope Cody Rhodes doesn't go there. That's like I said, that's where wrestling goes to die. Mm -hmm. I'm like I said, I'm so sur still surprised that they're still in business. Uh, have you seen the Slammiversary lineup? There's a tag team match with two guys I've never heard of. I haven't followed it. Uh, they put on a new match, like. Two guys that I never even heard of. I'm like, who the hell? Drew Galloway is still the current champ, I think, right? Or Drew McIntyre, whatever you call him. Drew Galloway, is he? I thought it was Matt Hardy. I don't. So you don't follow TNA? I don't like, follow TNA. I just, I just, sometimes I write down who's the champion, but I don't really follow. Would you blame me if I follow? Don't no, follow no, 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 no. Because it's TNA. It's like they'll never. It's 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 it. It's like they're just on life support, I guess. They, like I said, they've been on life support for like eight years. It's it's like, it's like they just don't want to Jay die. Lethal is still the ROH champion. That's cool, eh? What's it been? Almost two years? I think a year. Coming up. God damn, that's crazy. Bobby man. Fish is the TV champion. Yeah, that's cool. Like the longest ever Ring of Honor champion was Samoa Joe. A year and something months, I guess. Are you... F Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly. Both guys... Red Dragon. Yeah. Both guys could easily be big single stars. Yeah, I guess. Because I, I don't want to say Kyle O'Reilly is the Marty Jannetty of the team. I think that's a little too hard. Cool. Is, there any, is there a Marty Jannetty in Ring of Honor? Cheeseburger? Well, his name is Cheeseburger of all things. <laughs> that, that's the weak. How about uh, uh, Brutal Bob? Bob Evans? Yeah. Is he he's, a, he's okay. He's not like what you call a big star, though. He's, yeah. Pretty tough, pretty uh, rough in the ring though from the feet and stuff I've seen. Oh, Marty Jannetty, I would say Mark Briscoe, but he's still like talented though. So when I said the Briscoe brothers uh, get inside to NXT, I got a lot of heat on myself for that statement, right? In the form yeah, perspective? Most likely, yes. But really, the Briscoe brothers are fucking a talented, phenomenal team. Like, true. Who wouldn't want to but see they them? don't have the look of a wrestler, like I like. Vince McMahon's gonna look at him and Kevin say, hey, Owens is it GQ material or Well he's Joe. a Triple H boy. You never know the the, the Briscoes could be Triple H boys too, you never Oh, I hope that would happen, but no, not looking good so far. Plus, Mark like I mentioned before when we talked in private, a Mark Briscoe looks like a hillbilly rapist. <laughs> yeah, and he, he so does. does. Uh, also too, have you heard Vince is actually pretty high on KO himself now? Since Who? He's Kevin Owens. Okay, oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to get whatever. But apparently, uh, uh, he, he, because, you know, anyone that, that watches Kevin Owens on his in ring work and, like, you just can't help but become a fan of the guy, even if you are Vince McMahon. Right. But Vince being in his corner, as the sh uh, she'd say, 
That means nothing but good for the guy. But then again, this is the sheet. You can't but again, read. this is Vince McMahon. He does change his mind. Hell, lot. Fandango was big on his list once. Yeah, Fandango. <laughs> no offense to uh, Johnny Curtis. He's amazing. But the Fandango gimmick, holy fuck. Tyler Breeze is also not a... They, their new team, <laughs> apparently... Yeah, I just read that. Ten. Tyler Breeze and Fandango taking on somebody. Yet. And the shiny stars of the Caribbean. I don't think we'll be seeing them again. <laughs> I think they got a one-way ticket back to Puerto Rico. What but, happened? Uh, uh, you, you, you know, Vince isn't a fan of the guys. Oh, yeah, that, of course. They, they show up what's on Raw. It's like the Bruckus Syndrome all over again. The Bruckus... Wow, that's amazing. Did Ruckus idea. actually ever debut? Officially debut? Yeah, he did. He had two pay-per-view matches. He's part of the Truth Commission, right? No, he wasn't. I thought he was part of... Why the fuck can I not remember this guy? It's like, everyone talks... Who are you, who are you talking about? Ruckus. Ruckus. Yeah, I, I don't remember the guy. The uh, jacked-up dude, right? He actually had matches on WWE TV. I'll have to go back and watch that. I don't remember he the guy. He had two pay-per-view matches. One's against Cactus Jack at uh, Capital Carnage. And I want to get no that was, no that was Scott Putzky against Brian Lawler. Never mind, <laughs> some other match. It's like Ruckus. I saw the X, but I never saw the guy actually show up. He showed up. He was just really bad that they took him off right away. And there was that guy uh, Daniel Rod Rodmir Rod Daniel Rod He was supposed to be the the, the bodyguard for Art Rated RKO, but he was so horrible. <laughs> yeah, he was too green. Um. That's why I, I like the days of the old Sunday Night Heat, just some of the enhanced talent were uh, the memorable parts of the show. Or it was good, like, watching Heat, Jack, and Metal, because there was actually matches that were actually it, enjoyable. It's because those are the shows that the, the McMahon hierarchy didn't give a fuck about, so... They, Probably, they, like, no one gave a fuck about it, because somebody was supposed to look over the show, but no one was. Stephen McMahon was supposed to do it, and Stevie Richards named it Stevie Night Heat for, like, a month or two, and no one noticed... Then finally, Steve, Stephanie McMahon finally noticed he was like, no, you can't do that. Oh, and there was also that show in the mid-90s, Lost, uh, they had an all light heavyweight show for a while in the Attitude Era. Lost something. Lost, I'm like, oh, I can't say the name of it, but I, I ran that name by you. He's like, you're like, I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's a Spanish I remember, show. I don't remember anything like that. Where they had, featured all their, uh, light heavyweights and... Oh, I'd like to see that. I, I don't think I'm at that part yet, but like... Because I'm still on 96. It's really slow because that era is blah. You're still on 96, eh? Yeah, it's, it's just blah. Yeah. Still wait, because it's like the worst. Cartoon era, man, it, it would, uh, have you seen the, 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 the NFL themed show that they did? Yeah. The Raw Bowl. That was the first ever episode of that 96 era. That oh, was horrible. Oh my god. Owen Hart and Yokozuna coming out to a football jersey. He's like, the foot, the Raw Bowl. You, uh... And against the Smoking Guns and somebody else. You know what's funny? Andre, I always thought his last match ever was at WrestleMania 6, but apparently he still wrestled in Japan and Mexico for a couple years after. He just didn't wrestle in the WWE. Yeah. Because there, there's stories of how he teamed with Yokozuna in, in Mexico and stuff like that, if you've read the book, his autobiography, so... Yeah, I've read the book. It's been a while since I read the book. I've got to read that book again. There's and, uh, there. Frenchie Martin, who, uh, was, uh... Was, he was the one that managed the Rougeos, I think, right? Yeah. And he also managed Earthquake, I think. He, he was, was like... No, Dino Bravo. Dino he was Bravo Andre's... Earthquake. One of his... I guess his... Because Andre had people that took care of him on the road, I guess, like Tim White, and among others, and, you know, like, we hear the stories of police pulling all, them over, and Andre gets out, and just shit like that. But, yeah. Oh, like, when you're that size, like, you almost have to have someone help you just to... Dude, yeah. Could you see Andre getting on the phone, book the travel reservations? No, not really. But being that big, you have to have someone help you out. I just love the stories of him and his buddies playing cards and talking shit, like how he didn't talk to Shawn Michaels for like five years and <laughs> Shawn died. You know, he's like, no, well, I was just ruining you or something like that. Yeah, it's just like the fuck with him. It's like, it's <laughs> or the time he got Ultimate Warrior, like the story, like where um. Ultimate Warrior. Well, he roughed him in the ring, right? Roughed him. No, like he almost killed him because, like, Ultimate Warrior was doing this like clothesline, but Audrey told him, like, "Oh yeah, don't yeah. do it too far. Do, don't do it too hard." It was like Ultimate Warrior goes okay. The next match they had, because they were doing match after match after yeah. match. Yeah, they had a run there for a few months, and Ultimate Warrior kept on doing that, and Audrey kept on telling him stop doing that. 
then one day, uh, Ultimate Warrior was doing that to do the spot of like to run him with the clothesline. Yeah. Andre just put his fist out like this, and boom! Ooh. Ultimate Warrior just walked into his hand, ran into his hand. Yeah, I think that was like towards the end of Andre's singles runs after yeah. that, like because the last, the OSW calls him the Colossus. The 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 Colossus anime connection or something or what? Okay, the colossal connection is a term, right? His tag team was Haku, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The colossal connection, yeah. Yeah, they 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 took a spin on it in reference to uh, the, what's the the claws where you get your anal like claws claws. Oh, the colossal connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, they call which is hilarious because it's just, just just for their lack of enthusiasm with the team, but. You know, like I said to you, that uh, WrestleMania six tag match was actually a lot worse than from what I remembered. But when you're a kid, how are you gonna? You know, everything is judged on even level when you're a kid. So, exactly. you know, I actually thought Andre had more of a physical role in that match, but no, he just basically stood there the whole fucking. Time. It was Haku working the whole match. It was more. Oh, yeah, just now you gotta go back and watch the shit. You can see the stuff now. Because when you're a kid, you don't think of this shit. But, but you know, like, even you said, when you're that big, you know, the guy... Maybe that's the reason they had the ring cards at WrestleMania 6. So, there's no way Andre could have made it to the ring and back. Yeah. With his, uh... As gay as those wrestling cards were. <laughs> but... What time? So, but yeah, Andre couldn't go all the way there. No, but you also got a feel for the guy, too, you know. That, that life in that instance had to be pretty uh pain shitty like just think of it for how, how everyday things that we take for granted you know probably were 10 times harder for that guy i just thought oh dude like he was a giant like no him was a fork like, like fuck. A, a can of beer was like so small in his hands and I love like the stories of how Hulk Hogan was basically his bitch. Like he'd bring him wine, even though Hogan was the champion. It wasn't until he pinned Andre at WrestleMania three that he really officially made it. I guess you could say so. Right, right. Even though Andre, you know, they say oh he'd been undefeated for fifteen years. I'm really sure. I but, guess. But you know, like, like you even say yourself, that Andre got. Like, wasn't it Jerry Lawler that got a DQ victory over him in Tennessee or something? Or He had lost before, basically, is all yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, he has lost before. And he'd also been body slammed before, too. So. Yeah. Just WWE. But, but WWE was... How many people saw Memphis wrestling in the 80s outside of Memphis? So. Well, there was, well, tape trading, I guess. No, but from a national uh, perspective. Oh, not many. You know, how... Hell, when I saw Jerry Lawler show up in the WWE, I was like, who is this comedian? <laughs> I miss the old Jerry Lawler. I never Lawler. realized he was like uh, so well known in Memphis he could uh, run for mayor, which I think he did in the early 2000s, but right. lost. Yeah, but it was, I guess we're losing steam on this, I guess. But I'm, we're going to just leave it at that. And until next time, guys, this is J-Pan. I'm the Humanoid Freak. Take it easy, guys. Bye.